Good afternoon. It's really good to see you. So thank you very much for coming to the Unlimited Data Plans session, where we will be talking about data publication charges, or DPCs. How many people knew that acronym before today? Yep. Let's spread the word. Uh, and then also, we'll talk about DPC sponsors, data availability statements, and licensing options. So as you probably well know, we are this session right after lunch. So. To help combat this, we're going to do a couple things. So um, we're going to encourage stretching in between each presentation. I've told them they're welcome to choose a stance if they wish. So um, if you'd like to, feel free. We can start off with the Wonder Woman stance. We are going to learn about data and conquer it. So uh, feel free. Feel free to join me. I mean, come on. Yeah. So OK. So my name is Anna Jester. I'm the director of sales and marketing at eJournal Press. And I organized this session specifically because I think we need to be talking about data and what people are doing with it and actually have some examples of how that's happening. Because unlike many other forms of being preached at, <laughs> it's not that exciting to just be told, well, you really should be doing this instead, right? To so, um, please be sure and ask these people some questions about their presentations as well. We'll go ahead and hold questions till the end of the session and then allow people to ask questions. To my knowledge, none of them are running immediately away from the meeting uh, after this session, based on how it goes, I suppose. Uh, so you know, be sure to look for us as well after the fact. Um, so our speakers today, and I will have each of them come up as well, but are Elizabeth Hull from Dryad, Carrie Crawfee from PLOS, Becky Funk from Access, and Mark Hennel from Figshare as well. Um, I will let them introduce themselves as well. There are certainly bios and other information about the session in the app if you have that as well, and probably the program. I have not looked at the printed program, so I'll <laughs> check into that at some point. Um, and please feel free to tweet about the session as well. We highly recommend it. Of course, it's hashtag SSP2018. So, to start it off. All right, Elizabeth, if you want to take over and start us off. Let's see, maybe like a little side stretch. <laughs> this side. I like the other side. Oh, that feels pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Hull. I'm operations manager for Dryad, and that's all the introduction I think I'm going to do. <laughs> um, thanks for having me, Anna, and thanks for coming to the post-lunch session. Um, I'm just going to dive right in. So. Uh, the question of who should pay for the preservation and stewardship of open research data remains unresolved uh, at a time when journals and funders alike are adopting uh, stronger and stronger open data policies. And this push for data fairness, and I'm sure you've heard that acronym quite a few times already, um, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, the financial cost of access, quality control management, and long-term preservation is often sort of skimmed over. Uh, the Dryad Open Data Repository was founded in about 2008, uh, and it was one of the sort of the early players on this landscape. Um, a founding group of diverse stakeholders in research, publishing, library, funder communities uh, came together to develop a nonprofit uh, governance and revenue model that would ideally allow Dryad to uh, move off from startup grant funding and become uh, an independent organization that is able to sustain itself. The uh, cost recovery model was based on, or it still is, based on membership fees and uh, modest data publishing charges, so DPCs, like Anna said. Uh, the Dryad DPC was introduced in 2013, and it was then raised in 2016, and is currently at a, a, a base cost of 120 US dollars. Uh, these are, oops, th that all says one. <laughs> I think that must be a translation issue. 
these, these were the sort of founding sustainability principles for Dryad. Uh, one, we require sufficient resources to ensure that data can be responsibly preserved and freely downloaded into the future. Revenue needs to scale with costs, which are primarily uh, driven by the number of deposits that are coming in. And the fees that we assess should be distributed fairly. Uh, so some models of the Dryad uh, payment, sorry, some features of the payment model include waivers. Uh, we offer a DPC waiver to researchers who are based in countries uh, classified by the World Bank as low income or lower middle income where uh, research funding is not as available. And if we look back at last year, 2017, 2% uh, of submissions received fee waivers. If there is no waiver, uh, the, the DPC can be, and often is, sponsored by a journal, publisher, or institution uh, via a variety of payment plan options that can be set up with Dryad, some of which include bulk discounts. So the sponsor wouldn't be paying that $120 fee. It would be a lower fee. And last year, we had about 70% of submissions were sponsored by an institution. And then if there is no waiver or sponsor, the submitter pays the fee themselves. Uh, one of our major goals all along has been to reduce as much as possible the number of submitters who are paying their own DPC, because this can be a barrier <clears throat> to dryad use, and it can be a real pain for researchers to work out the payment. Uh, so about 30% uh, of submissions were paid for by individual submitters last year. So we were able to take a little bit of a closer look at that last group um, using some funding that we got from the National Science Foundation. We did a little research into um, how people who are paying themselves, how, where that money comes from and how it's covered. I don't know if you can read that, probably not. Um, the gist is that of people who paid the fee themselves, about three quarters of, were actually paid by their institutions or by a grant. They were reimbursed or they used an institutional credit card, um, et cetera. And that left about a quarter who paid the fee themselves and were not reimbursed. So they just paid it out of their pockets. Um, that really only represents about 35 submissions for 2017, so less than 1% 1, 1 of the total uh, Dryad submissions for last year. Uh, this graphic is a couple years old and probably doesn't still hold up, but um, we prepared it when we raised the DPC in 2016, and it's just to be transparent about our costs and show that you know, the, the Dryad fee really is about cost recovery. Uh, one of the biggest uh, categories there is, is curation. So that is one of the features that makes Dryad pretty unique, um, different, differentiates us from other sort of general purpose data repositories. We do have a team of uh, human beings, these human beings, uh, who are checking submissions as they come in uh, to make sure that the files are functional and can be shared openly. Uh, under CC0 license, which is, we only use the CC0 license. They also encourage good documentation and reusable file formats. So this is a really big value add and um, something that a lot of submitters see as worth paying for. So if we look at pros of the DB DPC model, um, basically the idea is that it's sort of democratic. It allows support from a broad array of uh, potential sources and hypothetically sort of limitless pool of supporters that are out there. It spreads the burden thinly among uh, various stakeholders and decreases reliance on, on grant funding. But then if we dig into some of the cons, um, obviously you're dealing with a very large number of small transactions, which is a heavy administrative burden on staff um, and accounting, et cetera. <clears throat> uh, it can be a challenge to make the case for why somebody should pay the fee if there are other options that do not charge a fee, for example. Um, revenue can be really hard to predict. There are, there are very few models to look at if you're trying to make decisions, et cetera. And it may cause you to sort of unintentionally focus on 
landing bigger partnerships or bigger plans, uh, and therefore it follows you have a risk of sort of being over-dependent on those big plans and sponsorships. So, sorry. Um, so there are, you know, this list of cons is a little bit longer than, <laughs> than the list of pros. And the fact is that Dryad has struggled a little bit to maintain the level of resources that we need to, to operate at an optimal level, to add features at the rate that we would like to, to do the kind of marketing and outreach that we would like to do. So there is a little bit of a catch-22 involved in this funding model where you need the resources in, in order to grow, but you can't grow. Wait, I said that wrong. But you can't get the resources without growing. You see what I'm saying? So if we, yeah, I'm, I'm following the theme of the conference where I say, what works, what's holding us back? So that's the holding us back part. And now where do we go from here? So uh, this tweet from Heather, Heather Joseph from Spark, uh, she sort of suggests that the days of open access publishing charges might be numbered. Um, if APCs are a transitional model, are DPCs also a transitional model? And if they are, uh, what do these equitable, inclusive, and sustainable models that she's talking about, what do those actually look like? Uh, we don't really know yet, but we would like to find out. And along those lines, um, this news is sort of being circulated as we speak, but um, I'm really pleased to be able to announce it here formally. Uh, that just that Dryad is launching a strategic partnership with California Digital Library, and some of the team is here in the audience. Um, CDL, if you don't know, but you probably do, is uh, one of the world's leading digital research libraries, <clears throat> and they have a strong history of coordinating collaborative projects and building tools like DMP Tool, Hathi Trust, um, that make a really big impact in the data in the library and inform information space. So our joint initiative will leverage the strengths of both of our organizations and we'll be offering new products and services uh, to build sustainable approaches to data curation and archiving. This will mean not only uh, improved technology and usability for the Dryad system, but also establishment of new uh, support mechanisms that maintain Dryad's sort of community governed and, and support model. Uh, so it, it's very early days, obviously we're just announcing this uh, yesterday, but we are incredibly excited about, this, about what this could mean for Dryad and for open research in general. And we hope you will stay tuned as we figure out and announce more of the details. And that is it. Thank you. <laughs>